In today's video, we're talking about Wooning's new aluminum cases, their polycarb plate option, FR4 and carbon fiber plates from KBD fans. Plus, we have a major announcement as Wooning is finally launching their HE60 Plus module, which skips the keycaps, the switches, and the case for those of you looking to transplant directly into a high-end 60% chassis. It's probably responsible to point out up front that none of the things we're going to talk about today are actually going to affect the gaming performance itself of the Wooning 60 HE. This is all for looks, feel, and sound. So this is my current and favorite 60 HE build so far. This is what I personally use every day. This latest Tofu Redux case sounds worlds better than the OG Tofu 60 case. I did a video about this already if you want to check that out. The issue with the Wooting 60 HE, if you even want to call it that, is that like most gaming keyboards, it uses a steel plate. So doubling down on the ability to swap it into any standard 60% tray mount case, Wooting has just launched their Alumaze case. This is all aluminum and comes in one of four different colors, black, blue, and gray, which I have here, and lavender, which I don't. At first glance, these look pricey at $119.99, especially when you compare them to the KBD Redux case, which is $59, plus an extra $25 for the internal brass weight, which is a must in my opinion. But shipping from KBD to the States is a beast at $25 flat, so after shipping and taxes, it comes to just about $115. And if you're in the States, shipping from Wooting is free for standard shipping or $9.99 for expedited. They're also offering a one-time 15% discount on the case if you already own a Wooting 60 HE or a 25% discount on the case if you buy it at the same time you buy the new module. This Alamaze case really leans into the quirky personality of their brand. The interior has a maze pattern that's not printed, it's actually molded into the case itself and we've got this gold aluminum accent piece that's removable so there may be different options down the line or if you're feeling adventurous you could probably 3D print one for yourself. And it does have a place on the side to hold the the Wooting flight strap like carry handle. It's purely aesthetic. Some people hate this, some people love it. I love it. It's cool here too because you can use the original yellow strap that came with your board or they include a black and white mono strap with the new cases. Outside of aesthetics, there are two optional standoffs, one in the center and one by the space bar. And they give us a way to change the board from four degrees to 7.5 degrees just by swapping out these rear silicone feet. The Alamaze case and the Redux case both have a front height of 20 millimeters and some people find that combined with the seven degree typing angle of the Redux to be uncomfortable. I for one always use a wrist with mine and the Redux doesn't have any option to change the angle so that's something to take into consideration if you like a lower profile. The black, blue, and lavender are all sandblasted anodized coating. The concrete gray color is a micro arc oxidation or MAO. It feels like ceramic and it's like a matte coating. It looks and feels great but unfortunately on the first version out they've had an issue where the tape they use to secure the accent piece for shipping has caused some ghosting or some discoloration on the gray version. You have to hold this in just the right light to see it. The good guys at Wooting are already out in front of this though. If you want to keep the case you have with the discoloration, they'll offer you a $20 refund or $40 in store credit. Or if you want to return or exchange and wait for the next badge, you can do that too. One thing I noticed about these cases, it's minor, but I do want to point it out. I use the Wooting 60% silicone wrist rest. It is exactly as wide as the stock plastic case and the Tofu Redux case. But it's not as wide as the Alumase case because of the way that the left side of this case is designed. It's minor, but as someone who's bothered by symmetry and fit, I couldn't be the only one. The sound on these does have that metallic tone that's common with aluminum boards. They do include a piece of foam in here as well. It's the same kind used in the stock plastic case. With these cases, I think you need the foam in there because the base experience without it is metallic and it's a little hollow and the foam helps to cool some of that off. I did pick up a frosted poly version of the Redux case. It looks super clean. There's no underglow with this PCB, but the RGB looks cool from the top and frosted PC is always just a clean look. It sounds pretty similar to the aluminum Redux case, especially with that brass weight. If anything, it just sounds a little sharper than the aluminum. Of the Alumaze, the Aluminum Redux, and the PC Redux, I lean more towards the Aluminum Redux for the sound, the way that it fits with the wrist rest, and the weight. Fully built, the Alumaze weighs around 950 grams, and the Redux weighs around 1,430 grams. But if you like the strap, the aesthetic, and the adjustable angle of the Alumaze, those things may be more important to you. So obviously doing like 20 or 30 different configs for a video like this keeps me really busy. And for a long time, I was guilty of just focusing purely on the work and letting a lot of other areas in my life slide. In the summer of 2022, I weighed nearly 275 pounds. It was not a good look. I was in the worst shape of my life. I went home to visit my dad, who just turned 70 years old. He's always been in incredible shape. He looked phenomenal. That was a big motivator for me to finally do something. So over the course of the next year, I lost nearly 35 pounds and I recomped a lot of my body mass. And a big part of that success, and continues to be a big part of that success, 
is Huel. And I'm so stoked I get to partner with them today. I use the Black Edition because it has a really solid nutritional profile for me. It's got 40 grams of protein. That's 33% more than the standard Huel powder. And it only has 17 net carbs. That's 50% less than the standard Huel powder. It's filling too, which is a huge plus. It's got 27 vitamins and minerals. It's 100% vegan. It's naturally gluten-free. There's zero artificial sweeteners, and it's less than 5% sugar. My favorite flavor is cinnamon roll. It is fire. It is just the right amount of sweet. I start literally every day with Huel because I always have a ton of stuff going on in the morning. I like to have something in me before I go to the gym, and there is no way I have time to wake up and cook breakfast. It's healthy. It's convenient. It works really well for busy lifestyles. On days when I'm stuck in the studio or I'm too busy to break for lunch, it's way better for me and way more affordable than ordering whatever from a delivery app. And I count calories and macros, so all the information I need is right there from my tracker, and you basically never get that with takeout. On your first order, you also get this t-shirt and a guide to get you started. To check out Huel Black for yourself, just click the link down below, and huge thanks to Huel for sponsoring today. In spite of all the mods I've ever done to this board, there's still this sound that's very specific to the Wooting 60HE. I've never known if it was the steel plate or the switches or some combination of both, but we're gonna find out today. So they've also launched a first party polycarb plate option. This is 20 bucks. It includes the PC plate in white with all the proper standoffs plus a silicone dampener and a foam dampener that's the same from the OG version. I guess the most important headline I found after building this board probably 20 or 30 times for this video is that there's not a big difference in feel between the steel, the polycarb, or the two aftermarket options from KB Defense. Because Hall Effect switches don't use contact pins, you need standoffs to hold the plate assembly to the PCB. And because Hall Hall Effect performance is granular down to 0.1 millimeters, it becomes really important that you not have any height variance between that plate and that PCB. That means that by design, flex is no good for a Hall Effect board. With the Wooting PC plate, you have every standoff molded on and you can't skip them. There's eight in total. When it's fully assembled, using the internal foam or not, there's barely any flex. With the KBD fans plates, you can choose which ones to attach and which ones to ignore. So as an experiment, let's only attach the outer two on each side. We still don't get a lot of flex, but what we do get if you skip standoff locations is variable distance between the plate and the PCB in some locations, and we don't want that. What this means is that no matter which plate you choose, it's still gonna be a firm typing experience. The difference between all the plates in this board when we're talking about flex is very minor. It's only subtleties to the bottom out feel that change. So once you pull that out of the equation, we're really only talking about sound. And again, not a huge amount of difference between all these options. Steel plate is the loudest and the firmest. PC is probably the softest in both sound and feel. FR4 sounds pretty similar to polycarb, but feels stiffer. And carbon fiber probably has the lowest sound of the bunch, but feels closer to steel. I should say too, that if you're into RGB, the white plate options from Wooting help accentuate that a lot more. And the plate options from KBD being darker dull that out a little bit. It's not the steel plate that gives Wooting that weird, like scrunchy sound that's tough to vocalize. It's the switch, and how you build the board around those switches is either gonna highlight or mute that weird spring sound. A really important note here is that the sound tests in this video have a tendency to really accentuate that sound, make it a bigger deal than it really is because that very sensitive mic is positioned right over the top of that keyboard, firing right down into it. In everyday use, when you're just sitting and using the keyboard, it's a lot less pronounced. The KBD fans plates also include switch film that usually results in a marbly sound in most builds, but it doesn't really do much here. Not much difference. So maybe it's because my switches are the very first batch L60s. They are hand lubed. So let's check out the newer batch of the L45 lighter weight switches. These are factory lubed. A little improvement, but again, not a huge difference. So Wooting also includes two different dampeners, a silicone and a foam with the new PC plate option. Silicone is supposed to mute more of the mid-tones and the foam is supposed to mute more of the high tones. The silicone for me seems to accentuate that noise and the foam seems to cool it off. So I think foam's the only way to go. What about keycap material? Ah, that's pretty interesting, right? The stock caps that come with the Wooting seem to do the best job of mitigating that sound, while the GMK and the PBT fans both seem to accentuate that, but they're both lower profile. So your choice of plate here really isn't gonna weigh as heavy as I thought it would in the beginning. The PC plate option is definitely an upgrade from the steel, 
Less so in flex, but more so in terms of the bottom out feel. It feels a little softer, and it's substantially quieter. Whether you go with the FR4 or the carbon fiber is down to really specific choices in sound and feel. Up until now, I've been mounting these builds using the burger mount. That's where you take two silicone rings, one on top of the PCB and one underneath with the screw going through. This prevents that assembly from making direct contact with the case. Now with the polycarb plate kit and the new module, Wooting includes little dampeners that achieve the same effect. But I have seen people mounting this board with gummy O-ring, and thanks to the homie lamp, I did find one at Ringer Keys that'll work. I will link that down in the description because this is the way. This basically compression fits the assembly down into the case. This is pretty easy to achieve in the Redux case. In the Wooting case, you need to start from the accent side and the top corner and work your way around so the port is sitting where it needs to. It also helps if you flip over the little foam liner to help keep the port level with the cutout. This makes for a better sound, a better feel, and the most consistent space bar I've heard yet if you're running the OG Wooting 60HE. So this HE60 Plus module has finally come true. We've been talking about this since the very first Wooting video a year and a half ago. It's finally happening. It is going to release priced at $140, but it's going to offer pretty deep discounts on switches, caps, even cases if you do everything when you order. It includes a braided cable, hardware, case foam, plate foam, and a pre-assembled module with the PC plate, the silicone dampener, the PCB itself, and screw in PCB mount stabilizers. First off, the stabs are great. I wouldn't do anything to these at all. They come factory lube, they sound great right out of the box, and the space bar is super consistent all the way across. One big note here is that the gummy O-ring mount does not work with the new module because the PCB mount stabs, they block areas in the assembly where that ring would normally be able to recess into the assembly a little bit to make it easier to fit. I could not force this thing to fit in either the Redux or the Alamaze case. Now the good news is, I don't think you need it because with the new module and the new stabs, the space bar here is very good. I did make sure that both the KBD fans aftermarket plates and the OG steel plate are both compatible with this new module. There's no fitment issues there at all. Unfortunately, I can't speak to ISO. I only have ANSI to go off of. As a final comparison, I put together a build that I would probably run as a personal build if I were modding the original 60HE. This is the aluminum redux case with the brass weight and the thin foam insert that comes with it. Keycaps are DCX Hyperfuse from Drop, which you should be able to score pretty cheap this time of year. The only note for me on that build is the switches. Those are still the original first batch L60s. They are hand lubed, but the newer L45s, they sound cleaner out of the box. They have better tolerances, less wobble. They're factory lubed, and I really don't think you need to lube them at all. I think the factory lube is good to go, and I really like the lighter weight on those two. For those of you that don't have a 60HE yet, I think you'd be perfectly happy with the module and the Alamaze case. It's just a more premium version of the 60HE. The shipping from KBD fans costs more than a single plate option from them, so I definitely don't recommend buying a single plate. I don't think that the FR4 or the carbon fiber offers enough over the first party polycarb plate to make that worth it. I am working on a video right now comparing the latest from Steel Series, the latest from Razer, and the Wooting. It's just way too much information to tack onto this video, but it should be out pretty soon. Any questions about modding or where to get any of this stuff, just hit me in the comments. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you all in the next one. Stay up.